Hey, C. Lindelof videos. I want to talk about the derivative of an absolute value function. I'm going to start with the derivative of x, uh, uh, first derivative of absolute value x. And I want to thank Martha Claypool. I watched her video the other day, and she reminded me of that illustration uh, that explains this so well. Uh, I want you to keep in mind that as we do this, I'm also talking about the derivative of absolute value of u, where u is the function that we're concerned with, because it holds up, and I'm going to show that in the next video. Pythagoras kind of starts this idea uh, in 500 BC, 550 BC, whatever it is. That's where I trace it back to, where he's trying to come up with proof, uh, where he's trying to come up with the idea that absolute value is the best way to define distance, that distance is not negative, that distance should be positive. So how would you do that? So he finds this distance that's negative 5, but he doesn't want it to be, he doesn't want it to be negative. He wants it to be positive. He says, well, how can I explain it? So he squares it. And he says, okay, well, that's, if I square that, then I get 25. And after that, he takes the square root of it, and he gets 5. And we can see clearly that one way to define absolute value, and this is what Martha talks about in her video, is the fact that the absolute value, so absolute value of x, can be defined this way, that we can say it's x squared. That gets rid of the negative, doesn't it? And then you take the square root of that. So if you look at Pythagorean theorem, I think it's a pretty good example of that, and I think that's what Martha is uh, alluding to when she does her proof. I'm going to follow her proof because I want to take her proof to absolute value of u because we have some assignments, uh, some functions, that are not perfectly x. They're a little bit more complicated than x, but this method is a, is a good, a very good illustration. So all I'm going to do is start with that. I'm going to say, let f, let f of x equal absolute value x. And let's agree that we can define absolute value of x as x squared, the square root of that. And if you look at it for a second, and I know what you're going to do, just try to resist the temptation, but x squared to the one-half power. So now if we can go from here and say, okay, well, if f of x is defined as x squared to the one-half power, I'm sorry, this way, then f prime of that using the power rule, I know what you're thinking because I can hear you in my head going, well, why don't you just fix this? Because I'm trying to, we're trying to illustrate this point, right, Martha? Uh, we're trying to illustrate this point, so I'm going to go ahead and take this derivative here and say, take the derivative of the outside, I'm going to use the chain rule here, I'm going to take this outside derivative right here, and say, well, that's one-half x squared, decrement this exponent to half, right, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Now I'm going to simplify a little bit, and I'm warning you now, don't oversimplify, or you're going to lose the point here, but look at this. Say that f prime at x is equal to this 2x, right, it's 2x over 1, so 2x over this 2 is in the denominator, so 2 here, x squared to the 1 half power. I know what you want to do, and I'm asking you to resist the temptation of cleaning that up for just a second, but what I am going to do is just clean this mess up a tiny bit. Say, okay, I have f prime at x is equal to x over x squared to the 1 half power, and now this is the point that's been alluded to, that we go back up here, and we say, we can define absolute value of x as x squared to the 1 half power or the square root of x squared. So all I'm asking you to do is take that definition and drop it in. And there we have it. This is going to pay off huge dividends. Now, I'm not saying I would always use this method. If I was taking the AP uh, Cal exam, AB a, or BC, if it was multiple choice, I'd, I'll be darned if I'd go through all this proof. But just so you know it, this is how this works. And in the next video, we're going to talk about a function. And the function I think we're going to talk about is uh, f of x is equal to 5 minus the absolute value of x minus 5. And therefore, instead of having absolute value of x, we have absolute value of u. But the illustration that Ms. Claypool uh, shows us in her video, which I strongly recommend that you watch, work applies there too. So I think that's going to lead us to a place that we want to be. So thanks very much for watching, you guys. If you have any questions or comments, um, please let me know. And if you get a chance, go to Martha Claypool's videos. She hasn't done a ton of them yet, but the ones she's done are actually really good, so I highly recommend her. So thanks for watching.